Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, Bitcoin Miami, North American Bitcoin Conference. Yet one more amazing show put on by Mo Levin. Uh, let's give him a quick round of applause. So uh, my name is Craig Sellers, and I've been working in the blockchain space for about five years now, and I've been extraordinarily fortunate to work on some of the really cool cutting-edge technologies uh, that provide a lot of in you know, incentive to, to creative professionals and developers to make new amazing things on the blockchain. And throughout the process of development uh, over the past several years, I've come to understand the blockchain in a slightly different way than others. And I'd like to share that, that, that insight with you guys, because it will help understand sort of where we're going with blockchains uh, and what the opportunities can actually be. So we can start with asking, what is a blockchain? Now, everyone knows that it's basically a decentralized ledger, a distributed ledger that doesn't really exist on servers anywhere. Uh, it's public, so everyone can see the information that traverses across a blockchain, uh, and it is a database of continuously growing records. Okay, but it goes beyond that. See, a blockchain actually has two primary innovations. The first is what we call enforcing digital scarcity. Now, digital scarcity is actually a brand new concept. In technology for the past 60 years, uh, if you had a digital copy of some digital content, you could duplicate it an infinite number of times. Think about Napster, think about uh, MP3s, think about uh, the music industry being upset with piracy. Because if you had a copy of a digital good, you could copy it an infinite number of times and then send that to your friends. It caused a lot of problems. Well, a blockchain enforces digital scarcity, where you can actually be ensured that the number of digital items is a finite number. Okay, this is a massive, massive innovation. And this is all thanks to Satoshi Nakamoto uh, and the Bitcoin uh, white paper. Now, the second item that a blockchain does is it allows you to assign ownership, which means if you have one of those elements of digital scarcity, you have the ability to transfer the ownership of that to someone else. And that transfer is guaranteed. So all blockchain assets actually have five attributes that, that make them fairly unique. And these attributes are the same on every blockchain. Well, the first is that all of these digital scarcity tokens, they're finite. You know how many they're going to be. As an example, in Bitcoin, you'll only ever have 21 million tokens. So these things are algorithmic, and they can be defined, and they can be finite. They're also authentic. So when you mine a Bitcoin, or you mine Ether, you know for a fact that that is the creation point of, of that token. And as you watch it traverse across the blockchain, you can always trace it back to that initiation point, when that token was actually created. They're also, therefore, transferable. Like I said, you can assign ownership to these tokens. I can transfer my ownership of an item to someone else. They're possessable, which means once it's transferred to me, no one can claim that besides myself. I have the keys, I have the password, I get to dictate how I'm going to dispose of that asset. And they're traceable. On a blockchain, everything's traceable. So when you watch the transactions step by step, block by block, you can actually see that ownership transfer happen you know, from one person to the next, one address to the next. So we started with algorithmic tokens, things like Bitcoins, Ether, EOS, Litecoins, algorithmic tokens that are defined by the protocol. These are sort of the circulatory system of blockchains. Now, beyond that, we created what we call managed tokens. Uh, and Tether was one of the first examples. Uh, it's considered a stable coin. Now, blockchain assets are entirely based upon supply and demand. And so the value is all over the place. You never know tomorrow what the value of a, of a blockchain asset is going to be. So we created a managed token called Tether, which was backed by dollars, one to one. There are only as many dollars in the bank as there are tethers on the blockchain. And that number can change over time based on the assets changing. Now this is true for ICO utility tokens, and 2018 was the year of ICO utility tokens, but it's also gonna be true for things like security token offerings and for property, other kinds of assets that are gonna be listed on public blockchains. Now here's an interesting stat. Uh, the Omni layer is, a, is an open source protocol that runs on top of the Bitcoin blockchain, and Tether runs on top of this. Well, a couple months ago, I asked the developers at Omni to begin tracking the relative value on the Bitcoin blockchain of different tokens. Bitcoins versus Tether versus Omni versus other kinds of tokens. And in general, what you see is around you know, 300 million uh, every day being moved of Tethers, and around 500 million every day being moved of Bitcoins themselves on the blockchain. Well, except for one day. December 17th of last year was a massive, massive milestone. It was the first time in history that more value was transferred on the Bitcoin blockchain using tokens as opposed to Bitcoin itself. On that day, $800 million worth of tethers were settled on the Bitcoin blockchain versus $500 million for Bitcoin. Okay, this actually validates one of my theses, is that the Bitcoin blockchain is actually the ultimate, ultimate ledger for the settlement of value, any kind of value. And this is proved on December 17th. First time it's ever happened. Now, it hasn't happened since, 
But as soon as more tokens get issued on the Bitcoin blockchain, that's going to happen more and more. And we're going to see the Bitcoin blockchain being used as the ultimate ledger for value settlement. So algorithmic tokens, managed tokens, they either exist or they don't exist. You can look at the ledger and see if they're there and where they are and who owns them. Now, they're non-counterfeitable, they're scarce, and they're cryptocurrencies without volatility, but they're all the same. Every token is fungible with one another. So every Bitcoin is the same as every other Bitcoin, every Tether is the same as every other Tether. This is the interesting part, because we're now welcome ourselves to the world of non-fungible tokens. Now, these are assets that can exist on blockchains that aren't fungible with one another. They're actually different. They go beyond those five attributes. They can be things like coupons, tickets, collectibles. Okay, this is where creative professionals get to sort of show themselves and create brand new items, brand new assets that can exist on blockchains themselves. So we started off with Bitcoin, uh, mining proof of work, algorithmic issuance. We built the Omni layer on top to allow for managed issuance of tokens. We then used the Omni layer to create Tether, to create stable coins. And now we've got the opportunity to add additional attributes to blockchain assets. Okay, so it's got five five common attributes of, of all blockchain assets, but now we can add things like programmability. Okay, and I'm not talking smart contracts. Smart contracts you can think of as vending machines. They'll take a common asset, uh, you'll put in one token and it spits out another token. Now this is an innovation in and of itself, but we've never had the ability to actually add programmability to individual assets. So now I can do things like create a game or a digital object that is programmable. It can be moved around, it can interact. It can have interesting attributes. It can be a toy that it sits in my wallet. Now, one of the good examples of this is with a new company out of Santa Monica called Sky League. And they've created this new digital object. Now, it's a combination of collectible card games, fantasy sports, and esports, where the athletes themselves are digital objects. And as you play with these things in your wallet, their state actually changes. Their value can change. Okay? And this is just the beginning. When you start playing with digital objects, you have the opportunity to create all sorts of interactive multimedia content that exists in your blockchain wallet. Okay, this is a massive, massive innovation because now it's no longer a balance in your wallet, some number of tokens that you have. You actually have objects, assets you can play with that are interactive and allow brands to communicate with the people who hold those things in their wallets. One of the examples is BlockV. Now, BlockV is also a Santa Monica company and they were founded three years ago to create VATOMs, digital objects programmable objects that live on blockchains. And virtual, uh, VATOMs are considered virtual atoms, okay? They're the building blocks of digital life, okay? They're smart objects. They can be programmed to do many things. They're dynamic. They can be combined with one another. They can actually direct traffic because they have GPS coordinates on them as well. Now, it takes a special kind of wallet to view these things, but it's still a blockchain wallet. Now, here's some other attributes. Besides being programmable, you can now make these items combinable. Let's say, for example, that I have an AR viewer in my wallet, and I'm walking around a mall, and I see little objects that look like puzzle pieces, and I start picking up those puzzle pieces. And as I walk around the mall, I pick up one more puzzle piece, one more puzzle piece, and all of a sudden I have all the pieces that fulfill the puzzle. And in this case, I put it together, and it's, well, a, 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 redeem, a renewable ticket for free yogurt. And because the yogurt company issued these things and placed them around the mall, I'm standing in front of the yogurt place as soon as I put these puzzle pieces together. Now, this is all happening in my blockchain wallet. So they're also redeemable. Now I can take that yogurt in and get a real yogurt. Okay, I've given them my asset, they've given me a real life product. Now with scan scanner, scanners inside your wallet, you have the ability to actually look at billboards and take pictures of items. And when you take the picture of the item, they simply show up in your wallet. And now with combinability and programmability, I now have an opportunity as a brand or an issuer to put conditions upon these assets. I can allow the consumer to redeem it for a Coke but I can also allow them to share that Coke with other people. In this instance, if I share it with four of my friends, the bottle fills back up again, and I can now get another free Coke. So all, you can sort of see the creative possibilities that are available. So they're also network aware. This means that you can play a game within your wallet. This, this collectible card is a game itself. You play the game inside the thing. Imagine if you could send an app on your phone to your friends, and they can send it back to you. In essence, you're playing a game back and forth. Well, these things become interactive. So you can actually earn points, you can earn currency and earn value within the object itself. So here's where it gets interesting. And this is sort of the insight that I've come to in terms of developing blockchains. This is a terrarium, okay? And a terrarium is sort of a self-contained ecosystem. You've got oxygen, carbon dioxide, bacteria, plants, and it's all sealed, right? It's all sealed in a, in a self-contained little object. 
Now, blockchains themselves are balanced networks. There's no server that runs these things anywhere. They're decentralized, so it's sort of a peer-to-peer -peer network. We're all communicating and we agree upon the message types. Okay, there's delegation, there are checks and balances. These things are autonomous and self-sufficient. And so the idea I'd like to propose today is that blockchains are in fact the first example of digital life, a living creature that sits out in the metasphere just sort of interacting with people, tracking things out there. Again, no server runs these things. There's no central point to go look at. And if you look at a blockchain network, it has an organic shape. These things are defending themselves against spam attacks. If you think about Bitcoins as red blood cells, they're actually moving information around the system and they defend against attack. So these things are also self-sufficient. See, this is the massive innovation. Now, I'm not calling it artificial intelligence because they're not that intelligent. They're very simple and they follow a very small set of rules. But what happens if we start adding artificial intelligence to digital objects themselves? So just two weeks ago, uh, Block V was at the, the National Retail Federation Conference at CES. And they did something that Forbes magazine called one of the top five digital transformation trends of 2019. They created a butterfly. But it's not a butterfly. It's an autonomous digital object. And what they did was in New York City, they opened up their wallet. It's an overlay with GPS. And on that wallet, they dropped 1,200 autonomous butterflies right in the middle of New York. And those things began flying around. And you could find one, you could collect it yourself and actually get that butterfly. And that butterfly could be a voucher for Starbucks, or it could have been a donation to a charity. It depends on which one you got. And even in their AR viewer, you could walk around New York, and this is an actual picture, there are butterflies flying over the place, all right? So since this happened, 1,000 of these have been picked up and redeemed. But if you were in New York today and you had the Vatim viewer, you could still pick up one of the remaining 200, okay, and be one of the first people to actually hold in your hand an autonomous digital object, okay? All of this is possible because the blockchain is alive. Now, this is the trillion object opportunity, right? There are millions of apps, there are billions of websites. I promise you there will be trillions of digital objects and they will all be, be tracked on a blockchain. And again, this is only possible because the blockchain itself is alive. All right, so thank you guys.